Well, it's been a very active 2020 hurricane season. Here are a couple stats so far this year. 25 named storms and that is including Hurricane Delta, which made landfall yesterday evening in southwestern Louisiana. If you're wondering what has been the most active season on record, well, that was 2005 at 27 named storms that year, technically 28, but the National Hurricane Center went back and did count in a 28th unnamed subtropical storm. But the most named systems was 2005 with 27 and they dropped down to tropical storm Zeta. Now, in the meantime, Delta made landfall yesterday evening at 6 p.m. on that southwestern coast of Louisiana. Notice I did superimpose where Laura made landfall late August. Now was in Cameron Parish in southwestern Louisiana. So a spread of about 10 to 12 miles, not too far from where Laura made landfall as a category four in late August. OK, here's tropical storm Delta. Currently a tropical storm winds are at 45 miles an hour. So it has downgraded and decreased in strength immensely. I mean, you can see a lot of moisture being spread out. It's interacting with the upper level jet stream, which is not conducive for any development or any strengthening. In fact, you can see the moisture spread out across the southeastern United States. And right now it's moving quickly to the northeast at about 16 miles an hour. And here's a forecast cone. It's going to drive and race to the northeast through Tennessee and Kentucky as a remnant low through about Monday morning. After that, it's going to fizzle out and we are going to be done with the Delta. But in the meantime, dropping some heavy torrential rainfall for the southeastern United States, including Jackson, Mississippi, extending and uh, stretching all the way into Alabama, into I-20 and also into portions of uh, Georgia as well, but to the north in Arkansas, Little Rock and into Memphis and I-40. That's where more of the widespread coverage and consistent rainfall is this morning. But on the back side of Delta, Usually with tropical systems as they spin counterclockwise in the atmosphere in the northern hemisphere, I should say a lot of drying air and here, here in Corpus Christi. That's what we're going to see a northeast wind, a little breezy at times, mostly clear skies and a lot of heat. In addition to a coastal flood advisory in effect until today at about two o'clock, it should expire later on this afternoon. However, the National Weather Service may extend this through tonight and potentially through tomorrow, meaning the beach conditions mill may be elevated, may be a little dangerous, higher than normal tides, about two to four feet above average, wave heights upwards of about 10 to 12 feet, and the rip current risk will be up to high. So be careful if heading out to the beach, maybe a little dangerous out there this afternoon. Okay, Harbor Bridge, 73 degrees, mostly clear east northeast winds, very light, but it's out of the north northeast, which is bringing down our humidity just a little bit on the left side of Delta. And the three day forecast looks great, just very hot and very humid. Afternoon highs running at about 10 degrees above average for lower uh, early to mid October, I should say. And then Monday, things slowly start to cool down as we're awaiting a potential cold front. That'll bring things down to more seasonal heat here in South Texas. OK, seven day forecast temperature 90 on Tuesday, 89 on Wednesday. Great news. We cooled down closer to the back half of the work week. Morning lows back in the lower 60s, thanks to a secondary front coming in on Thursday through Friday.